Hello, everybody. I'm Sovin Pin, the co-founder and publisher of Khmer Post USA. With this week's episode, I'd like to bring you our newscast. The information that we print on the newspaper, will, which will be read here on a weekly basis. And the length will go for 30 minutes. And after that, we'll have guests interview in studio as well. At this moment, uh, I will read you what is happening. Um, with this uh, November month, as we know, that it's the election month. On November 5th, law residents elected two Cambodian Americans to the city council, the first time that make it the first time in the US history anywhere to have two Cambodian Americans serve on the council the first time with upcoming term in 2020 to 2021. With this being said, there's also a number of moving parts um, with, our, with our city, and that's including the election change, election system just about to change, and uh, there were root causes to that. And up next, I'll bring you a little bit of history as why that happened. For example, in the last 50 years, Low operate on an election system which top ticket citywide votes together would win a seat. Low has 105,000 people, which nearly 49.2% of our population is made up by minority population. That's include a large of 30,000 plus Cambodians. The city is divided into neighborhoods, eight neighborhoods. They are including downtown, Acres, Patakatville, Centerville, Belvedere, Highlands, Low Highlands, and South Law. At the time of the law, uh, I like to bring back, speed back in a little bit as a background about our guests who will join us later on today. Visna Noon is a, among very few people who are in the midst of everything that happened. Visna Nun was elected to the city council for the first time in 2011. He, he served for one term and he lost two races after, which took place 2013, 2015. 2015, we had about five Cambodian Americans ran for office at that time. None won a seat, which I believe was the cause, root cause for the lawsuits that which comprise of Latinos and Asian American came together via a lawsuit which called Hood Worth City of Law that claimed the current way of counselor are chosen violated the federal voting rights acts by diluting the power of the votes of the minority in the systems. So, so connecting the in previous point that in the last 50 years, law operate on a system that top ticket citywide vote getter would win a seat. And with this eight neighborhoods that divided, we have one prominent neighborhood that pretty much set the structure of the political power of this in the city, which everyone know, Bavaria. Bavaria is a neighborhood section in Lowell that links to rich history of Lowell Mill era in 1800, which many family had big homes and great, made great fortunes during the textile industry and had powerful political influence. Up to this day, it had the highest voter turnout than any neighborhood in the city and had maintained a political structure for the city. For many people believe that the city is running well this way, except for one thing, the barrier to new candidates, people of color, who lack a famous family name and money to run successful campaign, it, to be parked, to win a seat in a local city government. With this challenging of the lawsuits that brought in 2017, we have witnessed some interesting changes. That's including Vesnano and had rose to the top ticket. Somebody who lost two count, two race and came back, rose to the top, that I like to call it, it's like, like a comeback. 
you know, you're thinking of like, um, anyway, limited, uh, limited that commentary there. Um, earlier this year, City Council agreed to settle this lawsuit by changing the election system to one way that acceptable to the plaintiffs in the lawsuit. To help the councillor make decision, they ask voter to express their preference on the election ballots questions. The first question asks if people wanted councillor to select it by rank choice voting, which a system currently used in Cambridge. Under this system, voter would rank candidates as their favorite candidate as number one, and second favorite number two, and so on. Two, second question asks if, if people wanted a system where three councillor would be elected citywide at large, and eight councillor would be selected from each neighborhood. Districts with my majority of the voter in at least two of the district being member of minority group. People voted in favor of at large district mix and against rank choice. Earlier this week on Tuesday, the council have voted in favor of the at large district mix uh, op options. Looks like this will be moving forward and in 2020 term, uh, the council has the responsibility to implement this change that including redesigning the district representation. So as soon as the election um, result came in, people, uh, just two weeks into the, after the election, people have been discussing about who should be the next mayor. And uh, as we know, two possible candidates, one John Leahy, who is the longest serving school committee member and councillors, uh, who believes he has enough votes um, to secure the seat at this point. And I just met Councillor Noon earlier uh, yesterday that he is still seeking for the conservation as the next mayor, uh, for the cause that he believes in that he will make the difference. And in addition to that, he finished pretty high as, a, as the second top vote getters uh, in this election turnout. Mm, in addition to the last term, he was the top vote getters. Um, in addition to Vesna Noon, we have new councillor elected Sokri Chow. I like to invite him uh, on board as well, but I believe he is now on a tour to Cambodia uh, on a, a basketball tour with uh, his team. So we will be speaking with him later on when he returns in a few weeks. Um, and um, I guess up to this point, uh, let's r tally up the name. Uh, who are our new councillor and some are re-elected one for the 2020 term. We have um, incumbents, uh, well, re-elected Rita, Councillor Rita Mosier, Wisna Noon number two, number three, John Drinkwater, new candidate, uh, will be first-time councillor, Rodney Elliott, long-time serving count councillor over 20 years, uh, Sokri Chow, new councillor, new elected councillors. John Leahy, we have mentioned earlier, uh, re-elected councillor. Dave Conway, re-elected councillor. William Samaras, re-elected councillor. Dan Rook, a councillor who uh, formerly served one term and uh, lost in the last election and just returns. Um, on other notes, news about school committee, we have new school committee member elected, including Michael Dillons and Hillary Clocks. Um, we, in Cambodian American community, we lost Cambodian sc uh, school committee man Dominic Lai, and four re-elected school committee member Jack D. Doherty, Andy Dakota, Robert Hoy, and Connie Martin. They will be continue to serve in the 2021 term. Um, last but not least. Uh, other news we have is the Mass Health Connector enrollment period is open uh, from now through January 30th. And it is an important period to make sure helping your family, mom, dad, everybody, children, uh, men and women, and make sure this is a period where you can enroll into an insurance plan and choose 
your primary care if you haven't had one because you cannot change your health plan after January 30, 31st, you get stuck. And if you don't get one, uh, health insurance, you also couldn't enroll unless you have some medical immediate needs or emergency or some sort of special situation which make things very complicated. That's it I have for now for this segment and uh, we'll be speaking with our guests very shortly. Hi, Saban. Hello, welcome. Well, thank you for inviting me and uh, thank you uh, to all the viewers, uh, all the voters of law, for the opportunity to serve you another two more years. Finally, we got you on the show. I know, it's an honor to be here. You know you're always welcome here, right? Thank you, thank you. I know and that. Thank you for this space too. Well, this is a very nice space to be. Uh, absolutely. I love this place. So that's why I come back for two more years and thank you to all the voters of law. So I know that, the, you know, last, last term you were top ticket and, and you served well with uh, Mayor Samaras, alongside by Mayor Samaras, on many key issues like the way you handled election lawsuits and ballot, made ballot into um, Khmer language. So I thought there were some progress that, you know, in our favor that we saw for the minority community. Um, this elect, past election, you uh, were elected again, and you were top second ticket holder. What? Uh, how do you feel about it? I feel great about it because we brought a message to uh, low resident, low voter uh, two years ago, 2017, that resonated with voters. Uh, what we did the last two years, what I did with other councilors, is that we led a, I led a transparent committee meeting around the election. Um, and how we uh, were to change. Um, so we took those message, um, the listening sessions to every neighborhood in the city uh, to hear how people feel about our current voting system. And we hear resoundingly from the voters, and they did uh, this past election, um, vote to, um, uh, uh, to change our electoral system. Uh, although it's non-binding, last week the council did vote to uh, endorse or support the voters' uh, 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 Choi, that is the hybrid A3 uh, choice going forward. So we need to work on how we going to make sure that, that this process is going smoothly because the next, in the next two years, that is 2021, we will go into a new system that is the hybrid A3. So we have to divide our district into eight and all those, those who wanna still run at large can, can, can do so at three. So A3 and those what it is. So. The other things that I did uh, with other council support is the, you know, bring about the uh, push for a workforce diversity inside the city hall and out. And, and we also looking into diversify the board and commission and create an alternative board so that address two, two things. One is that the current, you have an active board, we have board members. But then again, when those board members absent due to either family emergencies or whatnot, uh, you don't have a quorum. So the meeting end up canceled. So now when you have alternate, you address two things. One, uh, you don't have to cancel those meetings. The alternate can step in as voting member. At the same time, the alternate, at the same time, you diversify that board to include minority and women uh, on those board and commission. So that's what we did. The other thing we did was uh, help uh, win the support in terms of re, uh, reinvestment uh, in our park, housings, and historical building through CPA called Community Preservation Act. The last six, seven years, the city lost money or the resident lost money uh, because the city lost because our resident, when every time they go to register a deed, they have to pay uh, those fee in terms of document and whatnot. The last seven years, we lost about five point something million dollars. That could have been the city money because we did not participate in Community Preservation Act. So I did introduce that, the council vote for it, and then the resident, the, the voter of law, uh, just you know, this past uh, November, vote to support it. So we're going to, going forward, we're going to be able to uh, put in 1% of our taxes, and in addition, we're getting 25, 30% on top of those money uh, to use for our park, 
use for our uh, recreational spaces, affordable housing, and so on. So those are the three th some of the things we're doing. Also, we're talking about uh, looking at new revenue to, uh, to fix our municipal building. We get 3% from the uh, recreational marijuana revenue, use those money to uh, fix our municipal building. And those are some of the things that we did as a council. Um, so, um, so going forward, I think you know, we have many, many things uh, uh, to do, as I alluded to earlier, uh, uh, with regard to the, the change in the electoral system. So that, we need to work toward that. The other thing we need to do is that there's so many beginning of a new project, like I, I, I understand people talk about the high school as one of those big projects, three, 343 something million dollars. Let's pause a second. Yeah. Explain me why the low resident lost about $5 million into uh, their property taxes uh, in the last six, seven years. Explain why was it a loss? It's not a property tax per se. Say every time when people go to register a deed to, 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 to getting document or, or, or sign on deed, whatever, you pay fee. When you, every time you go register a deed, you pay fee for document and stuff like that that you need it. Uh, those fee go into what we call the uh, state community trust fund. Those trust fund where those city and town that uh, participate in those community preservation, they get to use those money, right? Uh, they get to get, if they put 1% in taxes, what they do get is 30% or maybe more on top of that 1%, and they use that to uh, fix their park, they use that to do affordable housing, they use that to uh, do historical uh, building. Those are the three things you can use, or uh, four things actually, you can use those money for. The city of Lowell, the last six, seven years, we did not participate in those because we say that's taxes, 1% taxes. It is taxes, but you know, it taxes where you, it's like a 401k. Take it in and then you can use it down the road. It's more money in that 401k. It's same, same thing here. Uh, so, um, so in doing this 1% taxes, we also recognize too is that senior, those low income or own a single home, that cannot afford this, even that 1%, we do the exemption on those seniors and uh, those uh, low income or those people who cannot afford uh, the, those 1% taxes. Any plan for the Clemente Park? Well, the, term you may have. well the, uh, the Clemente Park, there's a lot of work uh, put into Clemente Park already. There's, there are a few other parks that we need to take care of uh, in, the, in the city of Lowell. Uh, there's a Roberto Clemente baseball field located behind Butler School. Currently, there's no light there, a, a baseball field. So the kid, during the summer, they want to go play. So after that, I mean, getting dark, let's say six, seven o'clock, getting dark so they can't go because of the darkness of it. So, uh, I mean, if you want kids to have a place to go and pay a place to hang out as a group, a, 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 a lead team, uh, rather than them stay in the corner and get in trouble, let's do something. Let's fix those, let make light, turn, turn that light on, fix that. It may cost a little money, but then again, it's it, 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 it worthwhile to do so because now kids have place to go. So we have to look at making sure that all the park that we have, the 20 plus park that we have in the city, um, uh, have equal sort of like, you know, not this area have light, this area doesn't, so we have to really take care of our, our, our youngsters so that they have place to go to hang out rather than join the, uh, a gang or whatnot. So those are some of the things that we need to do. With regard to Clemente Park, I know the issue with Clemente Park is, has to do with name change. So the two group now, is, it, it, they came before the uh, park, park Board, uh, board and Commission um, four or five months ago, right? Park Board and Commission recognized that this discussion need to be dis uh, need, need to be uh, discussed between the two groups, the Cambodian and uh, Latino community. So now they are talking uh, how we can make it, change the name, but in a way that respectful of Roberto Clemente, the work he's done uh, for the city of Lowell and for uh, his native country. Uh, so there have been communications going on right now. We hope that at some point uh, there'll be some uh, re re resolutions to this. I also understand that quickly right after the proposal of name chain from Clemente Park to Pylon Park, uh, there was quickly changed the way that uh, the issue was handled. That was referred to a law department yeah. or, I mean, uh, where is that now? Well, it's now before the Board of Park. I mean, so you have to understand too, is that, you know, as a community or as a leader, 
we are not in positions to pit one group against the other. We better have, uh, uh, have them working together. You know, uh, that's how you lead things. You can't just pit one group against the other and just for your own political or personal gain. It's not about it. It's about serving, it's about making sure that both groups have communicated and talking about how we can be respectful of each other and working together with those, those change. change. Name change happen all the time, right? Just as a matter of we're doing in a respectful way, we're doing with communication from both sides, and that's what we need to do. And so that the Board of Park recognized that. Now it's a matter, it's before the Board of Park, but the, now, now the two groups now talking, eventually when they resolve, uh, have, have come to agreement, then they can bring it back to the Board of Park and have the Board of Park uh, make their decision on those those name chain and whatever that name chain is. And I see you wear the scarf that uh, say Cambodia Town on it. Uh, update us the pro that project. Uh, can you update us, you know, what is the city still involved in helping develop Cambodia Town in some capacity? The city is involved to some extent, but then again, you have the committee when I actually, in 2012, when I was on a council, uh, uh, get the city to recognize and, 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 and call the, the area is Cambodian town. Um, the idea behind it is also to help the businesses, uh, bring the business together to have those community, like business association, working with Cambodian town to promote that area. So uh, they are, their board and commission, their, their board members there, but they're not as active as they should be. Uh, so Cambodian recognize those areas as Cambodian town. Every year they do a celebration there. Uh, eventually in, in, on, in the corner of it, I mean, in, in the island in front of it. So uh, there, there's a plan to uh, have that name changed to Cambodian towns as well, uh, so that uh, they can then beautify the area, that, that island with flowers and whatnot, and take care of it as well as, you know, whatever come next. Uh, but I'm not really involved with the Cambodian town. They have their own uh, board and commission. What you can only do is that, for me, I feel that, you know, the same thing like Clemente uh, uh, Park. Uh, set up the committee to take care of that park. Uh, they do New Year celebration every year. They do clean up every a couple times a year. They take care of those, 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 those parks. Uh, little being done by DPW, uh, maybe cut grasses and stuff like that. But other than that, picking up trash and whatnot, there's somebody there taking care of it. So, and you want the ownership there, and that's what we did there. And the same thing with Cambodian Town. I, I do not, uh, you know, inject my uh, 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 feeling uh, or, or my, uh, 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 you know, you, should, you have to do it this way or that way because, you know, you have to give people opportunity to, you know, if they ask for help, yes, of course, but then again, you have to give people opportunity to do it their way. It's not your way. To pick on your point about the, um having you know the businesses get together and work with the city uh, idea of business association um, in law we have the highest asian owned business than anywhere percentage than anywhere in massachusetts we have 15 percent of asian owned business which com comprise mostly cambodian uh, comparing to boston only five percent that's the largest asian owned business and um it, it kind of shocks me that there's no Asian American staff at City Hall in planning department for economic department at all. Uh, what do you, uh, what's your comment on that? Um, one, one, of the, one of, one of the, the things that the city and just about every politician is talking about is that, you know, we get a great, this city is very diverse. We'll celebrate our diversity. We have flag racings every, just about every month in the city of Lowe. Uh, we have a lot of festivals and whatnot. The one thing we didn't have is this inclusion. Uh, you look at the workforce, uh, whether that be, that's why I, I've been pushing for a, a, a workforce diversity inside the city hall and out. I'll tell you why. Uh, I tell you uh, those, those two inside the city hall, looking at how we, when we have a job posting, how we pass that out to all these organizations so that their respectful, re respectful community know about the, the opening. Um, and, and those who qualify to apply uh, uh, should be able to do so uh, because now they know where, they, they know that's job opening. Say for example, uh, if there's job opening, you can't just put on the city website and said HR and said, yeah, there's job opening. What you do is it doesn't cost money, is that you have all these nonprofit organizations that you work with or that within the city, dozens and dozens of them, whether that be CBA, CTI, CMA, and so on and so forth, right? Those organizations have a leaders, at least a couple, right? So what you do is that you send those 
just one stroke, keystroke, compile all this pool of, uh, pool of email, send them to this respectful organization. They then can share with their board member and their, 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 their member, right? Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is that LTC is really good. You have very, uh, the, the LTC is a message. It's someone who sent message to all the community. They, are, uh, they don't have filter, like some of the newspaper or, 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 or radio that you have in the city below. Uh, so LTC, what LTC, LTC can do is all those Cambodian producers or Hispanic producers, so on and so forth, send it to them so that they can make announcement to their respectful community that there is a job opening. There is a, 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 a workshop on, uh, 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 let's say, um, you know, police training or whatnot, uh, um, civil service, how to take civil service exam to become police officer or firefighter. You see, those are some of the things we need to do. And, and so with city of law, with regard to DPW, you, you mentioned is that there's job opening. It's a matter of sometime when you're not, I mean, you look at qualification too, not just about anyone, everyone can really apply to get those jobs. Uh, so, so you put in uh, and, and it, you know, if that, that, I mean, if you have any concern over it, you know, if you're minorities, uh, concern over it, why, you know, uh, uh, the qualification here and the job description here, I match a lot of those and why I was not calling, give me a call. Let me find out why. I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, but I've been trying to do that, working on uh, 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 workforce diversity inside the city hall. And we only talk about uh, the police, the fire, the city, but also school department is just so bad in terms of the uh, student-teacher ratio. Yeah, right, we, we want to change that. That voice desperately needed in that, in the school department, or may I say, my voice desperately needed because now we don't have school commitment uh, from the Asian community there. Uh, in terms of to see that generational kids can see themselves through their teacher, those change in teacher and student ratio. We can do that. We can do that. We have that in the superintendent of, 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 of school now and the administration now, quite a bit of change there. The other thing I'm talking about is the, the workforce diversity outside the city hall, right? For example, if you have public dollar, like the high school, like the lot overpass, like any other public dollar, what you want to make sure that the contractors agree to what we call, we just did that with the, the high school, the local labor language, that is to ensure that minority, women and resident getting those jobs, right? That's one. Two, have those contractors or subcontractors create an apprenticeship program so VOC, MCC's student can be on apprenticeship. Apprenticeship starting, apprenticeship $20 an hour, right? In a couple of years, you may be qualified to take a test be, to have license, electrician, plumbers, and whatnot. You have a career path there. And should you want to change that later, you can do that too. So those are some of the things that we push to do. So we, we see that there, obviously, you know, city right now is facing many challenges. The, the infrastructure yep. is happening. Hiring, uh, diversify the hiring is, is going on in the effort of changing that. So, what promise would you make in, in seeking for the mayorship in the next term? I know you are a second top ticket holder. Well, I, I am put my name up for mayorship uh, for a number of those reasons. Um, that is, we have it in this administration uh, uh, um, that, 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 that want to move things and want to really be inclusive. Right? Uh, look at some of those, those issues we talked about earlier. We need to continue to build on that issue those issues, you have a big projects coming up the high school, you have the, the lot overpass project that, that's going to happen. You have the change in our electoral system, the, the, the tra transition in our former government, you know. Those are some of the things that, and then, then like I said earlier, my voice desperately needed in the school department to make sure that, you know, generation of kids can see themselves through their teacher and changing how we, looking at how we uh, recruit, retain the minority. Uh, 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 teachers and whatnot. I mean, I know what's needed, and I know how we can go there, get there, uh, with all the help of the, all, all my fellow council. Should I have the opportunity to be mayor? That's great. But if not, then I continue to serve 